So what we are going to cover today are the core concepts of Director that you would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, which is going to revolve around the individual users, the user groups they reside in, um, the groups that they can be a part of, such as hunt groups and work groups, um, auto attendant menus, and then also how to create schedules in Director. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in right here um, to individual users and give you an overview of that. In the individual users tab, you're going to have a printout of all the users that are currently existing in your system. Um, it's going to give you all the information that you should need at a glance, such as the first and last name of the user, the extension that they reside at, the site that they reside at, the user group they're a part of, and if they have a mailbox, um, as well as the particular phone that they are on. These are all filterable by the column headers. So if I wanted to look up people by first name, which is how it is actually sorted right now, I can click on that column header and it will sort that. If I wanted to do it by last name, I can also click on the last name header and it will um, filter by last name. And you can do that for each one of these column headers to make it very easy. Up at the top, you have the ability to create a new user where you see add new user at site um, and you can select whatever site you need to build the user at in the dropdown and then you just select go. If you need to modify an existing user, you can click on any of the hyperlinks on the user um, in the list of users and it will bring you to that extension. And so for this, for this portion to show what is available in the user profile, we're going to use the Fozzie Bear user here. And clicking on the user, as you can see, brings up a number of different options. Um, there are four main areas that you can make changes um, on the user, um, which is in that rib the tan ribbon at the top. You have general, personal options, distribution lists, work groups, and connect services is the fifth. That is just an informational field for advanced applications. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the general and personal options areas of the user here. Um, and I will describe anything that you that uh, is out of the ordinary so you know what you're looking at when you have to make any changes to a user. Um, so when you first click into a user, you will see this general tab here. Um, and it's split into several subsections. The first section is going to give you um, all the information you need to identify the user. So you this is where you would type in the first and last name of the user, in this case, Fozzie Bear. Um, the extension number, which is that number field there. So Fozzie Bear is that extension 203. The user's license type, um, which can be set to extension only, mailbox only, or extension and mailbox. And what that essentially governs is whether or not the user has a phone that they are able to answer calls directly at, if they have a voice mailbox, um, or if they only have a voice mailbox. Um, typically, this will be set to extension and mailbox, but if you have a user that doesn't need one, you can set this to extension only to save yourself on licenses. Under that is the access license, and this has to do with the um, capabilities that the user will have in the communicator client. Um, typically, you will see this set to personal. Um, this will give them access to the communicator client and the basic features, um, such as being able to um, answer answer and make calls from the client, use the directory, um, and add buddies to the contact list. The, the other options um, are more for advanced features in the communicator client. Um, professional will give access to personalized call handling. Workgroup agent and workgroup supervisor will give you access to um, log in and out of groups. And in the case of the supervisor, you can log others in and out of groups. And then the operator can also um, do advanced functions like drag and drop transferring of calls to other users to make their, their operations easier day to day. To the right of that is a little checkbox to enable contact center integration. If you use the contact center in your environment, this will allow you to actually integrate the toolbar um, that ECC uses with the communicator client to give it a cleaner look for your users. The next field is the caller ID field. This will actually override the caller ID that that user will send out when they make an outbound call. This can actually be set to anything that you like. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you do make a change to this, um, if it is a number that you do not own, it is possible that your carrier will block the call from going outbound to prevent spoofing. So if you run into that, this may be the field that you need to change. Um, otherwise, this can be changed to any number that you would like to outpulse, and the system will accept it. You just wanna go ahead and follow this example right here. Um, so if I wanted to do a number 555-1212, with an area code of 555, I would just do plus one, 555, 555, 1212. And if I hit save at the top, that caller ID would change. Under that is the DID range 
and the DID number. Um, this is where you would actually set the inbound number that would go directly to a user. Um, so if you have a user that has a direct line, this is where you set it. DID range, show you here, is actually going to be a range of numbers that you build on the trunks in the system um, that you can then select an individual number from for a user. In this particular case on our test system here, we only have one range of numbers built which is that 503-555-1212. And you will see that it says 10 of 10 available. What that means is that in this particular range, there are 10 total numbers and none of them are actually assigned so that we can actually put any of these numbers on the user. Um, the system by default for any range that you check is going to find the first available number in the range and automatically assign it to the user. However, in the DID number field, you can actually modify and change that to the number that you would you would want the user to have. Um, as long as the number is within the range that is built um, the, and the number is not currently in use, it will be able to be mapped in this way. Under that is PSTN failover, which is a, it's a setting that isn't often used in the short tail environment, but it's a setting that can allow you to fail over um, to another way to find a user if you have an issue where you cannot reach them on their extension number. Um, the default setting is none, um, but this can be changed to either try the DID of the user if the extension is not able to be reached um, via means like maybe a network link is down between sites, it will then try the DID to get to them. Or if you click on external number, you can also specify another number to reach them at like a cell phone number. Um, so that can be set up for each individual user as you see fit. And then right under that is user group. And that what this is, is the user group that the user is assigned to. You can think of a user group as a logical set of permissions, not unlike a container in Active Directory. Um, the the uh, user based on the user group will um, have access to, to the features that you tell them that they can, um, be able to make the calls that they need um, based on what you have set in the user group. And then they will also um, have um, specific mailbox settings as well. And we will be getting into those user group settings here later on in this training. The second subsection, um, basically handles the site that the user is at, the language that their phone and communicator use, and also the phone that they are on. Um, so we'll start with the sites, the sites tab here. If you have multiple sites in your short title directors um, platform, you will be able to use this dropdown to select the site that the user should be at. This will then give you access to the phones that are available at that site. Um, so it's very important to note that if you are creating user for a remote site, this will always default to the main site, in our case, headquarters. Um, if you need to add them to a phone at another site, you want to make sure you select that site in the dropdown. Otherwise, when you go to, cha to uh, change them to the phone, the phone that you want will not show up in the list. Um, so that is important to remember. Under that is the language tab. Um, the Shortel system does offer the ability to install multiple languages um, to, to show up on the display of the phone as well as communicator. By default, um, the system only ships with the English language. Um, so if you needed additional, uh, additional language packs, those are available. Um, I would recommend giving us a call um, or sending us an email so that we can get you set up with those. Um, if those are installed on your system, then you can select this drop down and you would be able to change the language of the, of the uh, communicator and phone for that user so that they would be able to see it in the language that they speak. And then the field under that is called primary phone port. This is actually where you're going to see where the user is assigned to a phone um, and where you can manipulate those settings. So you'll, you'll see three radio buttons here. Um, you'll see IP phones, ports, and soft switch. Um, IP phones is any Shortel IP phone that's available in the system that is not currently assigned to a user. In this particular case, because this is a demo system, we don't have any actual IP phones on this system. However, if you um, went into your system and you selected this dropdown, what you would see is the MAC address of any phones that were available on the system to be used for a user. Um, and you would be able to select that in the dropdown. 
And this is done by site, as I said before. So if you were looking for a phone at a remote site, um, you would want to change that site dropdown to match the site that you want to put the user at. And then you would be able to put them on the IP phone. Below that is ports. Um, what the ports section is for is for analog devices. Um, all the short tail switches um, from the 30s, 50s, and 90s to the 24A, if you have, the, have one of those, um, have the ability to um, support um, analog devices, and they will be used on ports on the short tail system. Um, if you have a short tail switch that is set up to use these ports, then you, you would be able to select this radio button, and then in the dropdown, you'd be able to select the switch and the port that, they, that the uh, extension resides on, and that will tell the system that that is an analog extension and to send the calls to that port. Under that is soft switch. Soft switch is generally used for users that are not going to have a IP phone or an analog device, but instead are going to use the soft phone function in short tail communicator, which essentially lets you use a PC headset to act as a phone in conjunction with the client, and you just use the client to manipulate your calls. Um, if you wanted a user to do this, you can just assign them to the soft switch so that they aren't using any other resources on the system. Then you have the current port setting. This is important for any, any short tail system where you have users that do what we call hot desking, where they will assign themselves to a random phone or may, maybe just another phone in another location on certain days. This will tell you what phone they're actually currently assigned to so that you can, you can uh, move them back if needed or, um, or just know exactly where the user is. Um, Currently, because this user does not have an IP phone assigned, it, it does just say any IP phone. However, if they were assigned to a phone, you would actually see the name or MAC address of the phone in, in that uh, text box. And next to it, you do see that button called Go Primary Phone. That will actually send the user back to their permanently assigned phone um, if you need to do it that way. And then under that, is an informational field called Jack Number. Um, this is purely informational and it is an optional field. This will allow you to put in any notes that you need for the user, like maybe the, the number of the Jack, um, for example, which is what the field is normally used for. That way, if you ever have any issues with the phone, instead of having to go and and uh, see the user, look at look at the port on the wall, you can have the the information right there, so that you can go right into your server room, take a look at the at the configuration there. Um, and just make yourself a little bit more efficient with troubleshooting. The next subsection has to do with the user's mailbox options and also um, a few other options, such as the ability to use the cell phone. Um, the first one is your mailbox server. Um, and this is simply which short tail server in your system the, the uh, user is using to, to host their mailbox. Um, ours is currently set to headquarters. If you have any distributed voice servers in your system, those can be those can be used for voicemail as well, as long as they're not being used for advanced applications like a call center, um, in which case we do disable the mailboxes as a general rule of thumb. Um, but And um, there are also short tail V switches um, that actually have an internal hard drive and are used for remote sites that can handle voicemail as well. So you can actually choose those from this drop down here. Accept broadcast messages specifies whether or not the user will accept a message that is sent to the entire system um, using the, the voicemail tab in Communicator. You can send messages to everybody as opposed to send, sending out a page. Um, and if this bo box is on check, they will not accept that broadcast message. Include in system dial by name directory um, means that if you have a dial by name directory um, in your system that outside callers have access to, um, such as often auto attendant, um, the user, if this box is checked, will be included in that dial by name directory. So if they, if you um, start typing their name, you would actually hear the recorded name of the user um, once a match was made to them. If you don't want them to show up in the dial by name directory, you can uncheck this box and they will not show up anymore. Under that is the make number private checkbox. Um, this is an important one for um, executives who don't want internal internal employees to know exactly how to reach them directly. Um, what this will do is this will actually take them out of the system directory completely so that 
um, other users in the system aren't able to actually find them without knowing their extension number. So it prevents people from just calling from calling upper level executives, for example, on a whim. Um, the other thing it does is it does block your outbound caller ID. So you you will not um, show caller ID when you make those outbound calls. Um, so that, those are two things to keep in mind if you want to make somebody private. Um, in rare cases, the use of this can um, alter the ability to make calls um, and some trunk settings may need to be changed. So if you run into an issue like that, um, when you check check this box, um, I would recommend giving us a call so that we can work with you on that. Um, there can be some trunk settings that need to be changed. Fax support is if the user is going to be a ac actual fax machine, which would be an analog, an analog fax here, or if you are using a fax server in your system. Um, the, the fax support options um, that you have are user no redirect, which would mean that the extension goes directly to a fax server. User redirect, meaning that the, the user is, is actually a person, but if you receive fax tones, it should go to the redirect that is actually handled in the sites tab. You can specify an extension um, and IP to go to. Fax server is if the machine is actually the fax server, if you're using an analog fax server. Um, fax machine is if it's an actual fax. And then you also have options for non-T38 data terminal and non-T38 fax server. T38 is a store and forward protocol um, that is used with SIP circuits to make faxes work better. Um, if you're using something like a modem on the Shortel system, you'll want to select that non-T38 data terminal that will allow the modem to work correctly. Allow video calls. Um, a, a feature that a lot of people aren't aware of is that the Shortel communicator can actually support one-to-one -one video calls um, within the system. It is a licensed feature, um, and Shortel does offer licensing in both standard resolution as well as high definition resolution. Um, so if this is something that interests you, um, you can get this licensed and turn this on for each user that you want to have access here so that they would be able to create those video calls. Allow telephony presence. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with Communicator and the buddy list. Um, if you aren't, it is a tool that lets you select a, a list of your most used users, so the people that you talk to the most or the people that you just need to keep tabs on the most. Um, and you can see if they're available on, the call, on a call uh, or if they're in a do not disturb status. Well, this allow telephony presence actually governs whether or not you can see those, those statuses. If you uncheck this box, then you would be able to still add people to a buddy list, but you wouldn't be able to see if they're on the phone or if they weren't on the phone. Um, it is checked by default um, because that is that is normally how, how it works. Um, if you ever needed to disable that, though, you can disable that here. Shared call appearances allows you to set up what's called a bridge call appearance. Um, it's typically used for secretaries um, who need to take calls for um, executives and will allow calls that are going directly to the executive to be presented to the secretary in question so that they are able to answer the call um, instead of the executive answering directly. If you check this box, it's going to ask you to associate a BCA with it or the bridge call appearance, which is a which is another feature that you would set up on, under call control. Allow use of soft phone allows you to use the soft phone client um, in the short tail communicator, um, which is essentially what I do every day on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it allows you to use a PC headset in conjunction with the communicator client um, in order to make and receive calls. It is a licensed feature, which is why there is a checkbox here. Um, so if you want to um, experiment with this or have a couple of users turn this on and try it out, you would want to click on this allow use the soft phone checkbox, and then they would be able to use that. And then under that is allow phone API. Phone API is used with a number of advanced applications or typically with typically building in. Um, it is not something that you normally see. It is licensed, but it is also something that you can self audit. Um, so if you needed to turn this on and and mess with any settings that you wanted on an advanced application that you're building, you could turn you could turn this box on. It is not normally used, um, so it's not something that you will normally see.
Mobility options, um, this is actually where you would turn on a user's ability to use the short tail mobility platform. Um, we're not gonna get into this too much today um, because the mobility platform is its own separate set um, of details that we would need to go over. But this is where you would actually turn on a user if you had a mobility router. Um, the checkbox um, to allow the mobile access actually lets them use the, use the uh, client. Um, on their cell phone, and then the allow enhanced mobility with extension is where you would put their secondary mobility extension in. Um, so when you check that box, it actually creates a ghost extension in your system that is used with mobility. And then under that um, is an option for what's called delayed ring down, which I'll explain in a second, and then all of your usernames and passwords, as well as your conferencing and instant messaging settings within the system. Delayed ring down is a feature that is used if you have something like a door ringer that is connected to the system, maybe via, maybe as a SIP device or using an analog circuit um, that you can use um, so that it can still make calls even though it doesn't have a dial pad. So what would happen here is when you check the delayed ring down checkbox, you can specify either an extension to dial or an external number, as well as set a delay for the ring down. And so what will happen is with, for example, a door unit, when you press the button on the door unit, um, it will actually ring wherever you choose after the, after the uh, delay is hit, and then you'll be able to talk with that group or person so that they can let you in the door. So this, this is something that is used for something like security doors or if you just wanna have a buzzer so that you can let people in, this is where you would set that up. Client username and client password are the username and password that you would use for Shortel Communicator and also for Shortel Director if you um, are an administrator of the system. Um, so you can change the client username here. And then if you need to change the client password, you'll notice that there are two boxes that are that are uh, protected so that you can't see the characters. Um, the default password is change me with all lowercase letters. And then if you need to change that, you can type in a new password in the left box and confirm it in the right box. And when you hit save at the top of the menu, um, you would be able to then um, set that password for the user. The same is true for the voicemail password. The default for that voicemail password is 1234. Um, if you need to change that, you can change that to anything, any numerical four digit number um, by using this box here, and then you would confirm it in the second box. Um, and then also unique to the voicemail password is the must change on next login box. That will force the user once they log into the voicemail system the next time to change their voicemail password. Um, so that's a nice box to have if you um, need to reset a password for a user so that you can just set it to something easy and then they can set it to whatever they choose when they're ready. And then under that is SIP password. Um, just for your informational purposes, um, this is used for um, things like short-tail mobility um, and is not normally needed unless you're going to use an advanced SIP function like mobility. Um, it looks like there is actually a password in there by default, but there isn't. Um, so if you need to make make a password for this, um, for a user that's using mobility or any other sort of SIP device that requires a password, um, you do the same thing that you would with the other passwords. You can add it um, on the left box and confirm it on the right box. Email address is where any notifications that the system sends to the user, such as voicemail notifications to email, um, this is where that will go. Um, so if you need that user to have um, those notifications, you would just put their email address in here, um, and then you can update it as you need from this area as well. And then under that are conferencing settings and instant messaging settings. Um, these will govern whether or not the user has the ability to create conferences and whether or not the, ability, the uh, user has the ability to instant message. Um, by default, these, this will be set in a drop down to the none setting. Um, if you have a conferencing appliance, um, which would be the SA100 or the SA400 appliance, um, and those are also available in a virtual, in a virtual version um, hosted by VMware, um, then you can select this in a drop down and then the user would be able to create their own conferences. Without this check, they would still be able to join conferences, but they wouldn't be able to create their own. 
Um, the same is true with instant messaging. Um, the SA100 or 400 also governs the instant messaging on the system. And if you have this set to none, then the user would not be able to um, send or receive instant messages. Um, but when you change them to use one of these appliances, then they will be able to. Okay. And that is it for the general tab. I'm going to go ahead that and might go. now be a good time just for um, two questions that I see that have come through. Sure. One is um, caller ID. If you wouldn't mind commenting on caller ID, can that be the sending DID assigned to the user? Yes, it can. So it can be any number that you wish. And to elaborate on that, um, if you actually keep the caller ID field blank, if the user has a DID, then it will send the DID out um, automatically. Um, if you don't want to send the DID, then you can use the caller ID field to send a different number out, such as maybe the main number of your business. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you um, wouldn't mind telling us, what's the best way to forward calls and voicemails from one user to another user? in the case of maybe when somebody has left a company? So um, those, those are kind of two separate topics. So I'll, I'll go over the forwarding of calls first. Um, you can actually do that using a user's call handling mode if you, if you um, wish, um, if a user is out on vacation or just gonna be gone for an extended period of time. Um, you can actually do that in the user's call handling options, which is under personal options, the next uh, field that we're going to cover. Um, and so I'll get into that a little bit more when we get when we get to that point, um, which will be here in about five minutes. Um, as far as forwarding voicemails, um, both in the the voicemail on the phone as well as the communicator client, you have the ability to forward there. Um, so you can you can select the voicemail that you need in communicator. You can you can click on the forward button and then type in the extensions that you need those those voicemails to be forwarded to. You can even um, add a subject line for it or even a uh, recording before the voicemail so that um, the person that you're forwarding to can hear that you have heard it and that it is it looks like it is for them. Um, so you can do it in that way. You can also do it through the, uh, the uh, voicemail prompts on the phone. There is an option as you listen to voicemails to forward. Thank you. Um... I know that there's just a wealth of information in Director and so many different scenarios and options. Um, I'm gonna ask you one more question now and I wanna just remind everybody, I am monitoring all questions coming through chat and answers will be um, given, if they're not verbal answers during this call, we're gonna be answering questions via email and sending you your answers so we can keep Tom on track. Um, but if this is a quick answer, Tom, somebody sure. wants to know what's the difference between the allow use of soft phone versus assigning a user to a soft phone. So basically you can't do one without the other. Um, without the allow use of soft phone box checked, you would not be able to assign a user to soft phone and director. Um, and just to make sure, if you if you are talking about assigning to the soft switch, um, the soft switch is just a server is just the server itself. You can assign a user to the soft switch without giving them access to soft phone, um, but that user essentially wouldn't wouldn't be able to make calls from their extension. You could set up a mailbox in that way, um, but otherwise, it's just going to be a user that's sitting there on the soft switch. Um, if you want the user to use soft phone. However, um, you do want the, the uh, allow use the soft phone checkbox to be checked, which is right here. Um, and then you can either give them an IP phone that they can still talk on if they want to use either or, or you can assign them to the soft switch if they're going to only use the soft phone. Thank you. I'll let you take a quick drink of water and a breath of air and continue on. All right. Sounds good to me. So the next area that we're going to look at is personal options. And personal options is going to control um, specifics to the user, such as how many concurrent calls they will be able to accept at one time, 
Um, you can change the ringtone for the phone in here as well as the wallpaper on certain phones um, and also how their phone handles calls by default. Um, so to go through this real quick, um, up at the top, just like before, you will see the username and extension. Um, on, this, on this column though, you are not able to change those. Those can only be changed in the general tab. And then under that, you have your call control options. Um, so going through these, your current call stack size. What this is, is this is how many calls at one time that a user can get until the user is considered busy and any additional calls go to voicemail. Um, the default setting for this is eight calls. Um, so the user will be able to accept up to eight calls at the same time. And if any more calls come into that one user um, after he, they already have eight, they will go directly to their busy destination which is typically voicemail. This can be set to any number between one and eight. Um, I personally have never seen somebody hit eight calls all at the same time, um, but if you want to lower this for your users, it can be done on this, on this uh, page in this box. Ring type is the ringtone that your user has. Um, there are four default ringtones in the Shortel system. Um, and then you can also add your own custom ringtones. Um, if you wanna change them here, you can. The user also has the ability to change their ringtone from the phone themselves as well as in communicator. And it is important to note that this ringtone is only for the phone itself. It's not for the communicator notifications which have their own beeps. Wallpaper is used with the IP480, the IP485 and the IP655 phones. Um, you or I'm sorry, the 485 and the 655, not the 480. Um, the, you are able to change the wallpaper um, that is displayed on the phone in this location. Um, this can also be done in the options of the phone for the user directly. So this is something that they can change. And really as a general rule of thumb, all of this can be changed by the user. You just also have the ability to change these on the back end as well. Automatic off-hook preference is what the system will send your calls to if you try if you just activate a line button or if you accept a call via communicator. The default for that is speaker. So it's gonna go through the speaker phone of the phone that the user is assigned to by default. Um, you can change this to headset if a, if a user primarily uses a headset or if they use a wireless headset, um, as many of you do, you would wanna set this to wireless headset. That way, not only will the headset work, but they'll be able to use the headset button to turn calls on and off. Um, that way they can still be effective while they're away from their desk. Hands-free mode. Now this is kind of a fun one um, and one that does come up fairly often. What hands-free mode does is it actually suppresses the dial tone on the phone until a, a digit is pressed. Um, this is meant primarily for users with headsets that are always gonna have them on all the time so that they don't have the dial tone ringing in their ear. Um, so when you check this, the user won't hear anything until they press a button on their phone to start dialing. Um, if you have a user that says that they no longer have dial tone on their phone, this is something to check um, because this can also be turned on by the user in their options and communicator. And then you also have the call waiting tone here. Um, call waiting tone is gonna be a little beep in your ear um, when you have another call coming in while you're on the phone. If you wanna disable this, um, you can uncheck this box and then you'll still be able to receive calls. You will still see the second call coming in on the phone um, or in communicator, but you won't hear the beep. So that way the beep won't interrupt you. Um, of importance here is if the user is actually an analog fax machine, um, you want to uncheck this box because the call waiting tone will interfere with fax signaling and, and will affect your ability to make and receive faxes. Um, to go along with that, one thing, one other thing you'll want to do is you'll want to set the current call stack size to one for a fax user because a fax cannot accept multiple calls at the same time. Trunk group access code. Um, this is going to be the default trunk um, code that is used if you dial in short tail communicator. Um, it is just mainly mainly a setting that you will see here that isn't going to affect much much else here. Um, and that's because the short tail system is intelligent enough to use least cost routing if you have multiple trunks to send calls to a destination where the dialed call should be local. 
Um, but you can manipulate these settings here if you choose. Um, in our in our system, we only have the one um, set of trunks, so I only have one option. And then mailbox for recorded calls. Um, in the in the uh, Shortel system, your users, if you allow them in the user group settings, can actually record their own calls. Um, if you choose to allow them to have that feature, um, then you can use this box to specify where those recordings go. So if you had a supervisor that was supposed to get all those recordings, you could actually add their extension here in this box and you would be able to send all the recorded calls there. If this box is blank, then that call goes to the voicemail of the user that recorded the call. The links under that, um, the first two, um, we aren't going to get into too far because there's a lot of um, topics to cover in there. But um, this is where you would actually program your IP phone buttons as well as any communicator toolbars for the user. And just to show you here real quick, if I click into the program IP phone buttons link here, is going to pop up a, oh, that's because I left that other one. There we go. Um, it's going to pop up a page that looks like this with up to 12 buttons um, on the page. And you will see um, many, many options that you can choose from for buttons that you can create on the system. Um, we, we most often see um, what's called a monitor extension button, which allows you to um, focus on one user and see whether they're on the phone or not and even pick up their calls if needed. So it's used for people that cover the phone calls for others when they're, they're out and about or when they need help. Um, if you have any questions about specific buttons and, and what they do, or if you need a specific feature, um, definitely engage our support. We will be able to assist you with what you need there. Um, and then this may, this will probably be covered in another training later on down the road because there's so much to it. Um, you, you might note that there's more, um, button listings here than there are buttons on the phones that you have. That's because, um, some, some of the phones have eight, some have six. Um, some have two, um, so they there is no actual template for each phone. Um, typically, you, you would look at one through eight. And then you will also notice that button one is grayed out. Um, that is because the first line always needs to be used for what's called a call appearance so that you can see who is calling you. Program communicator toolbars is basically the exact same thing, um, except instead of um, being on the phone itself, this will actually create a toolbar on your communicator client that you can use for these features. Um, and as you can see, there are, again, several different options here. Um, so if you have anything that you need set up or would like to set up for your users, um, I would recommend engaging our support for that and we'll be able to help you with that. And later on down the road, this will be covered in an additional training that we offer. So the next piece we're gonna get into is external assignment and additional phones. Um, this is a big one for a lot of people. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click into this here. This is where you can actually set up the find me feature in the system, um, as well as the ability to externally assign to another, to another number like a cell phone, um, or even ring additional phones when a user is called. Um, so find me is a feature that once you reach the voicemail of the user, you can actually press one um, and you can activate the find me feature. Um, the system will then try to reach the user at either another extension or an external number in the system for a certain number of rings. And then you can also have a backup extension to go with that. Um, so this is this is essentially an optional additional ring that people can try um, if they aren't able to reach who they want to reach. Um, to go along with this, um, you, can set, you can set the number of rings that the secondary destinations will be tried before it goes back to the voicemail. Um, you can choose whether or not to send the incoming caller ID, which means that the secondary devices would actually receive the caller ID of the person that was trying to reach them. Um, this can be hit or miss depending on the carrier because this, what this what this will do is actually send out the caller ID, caller ID as the person that was calling you. And so it is dependent on your carrier um, to support that. Um, there is also an ability to set up auto find me. Um, which means instead of pressing one, find me will just automatically go into effect if you are if you are not able to be reached. Um, and then there is the ability to record the caller's name. The system will actually prompt them to record their name and hit pound, and then you will hear that when the call is presented to you on the secondary device, so you know who's calling you. 
Um, so you have all of those abilities there. Under that is external assignment, which is what we normally see for users when they need to um, still receive their short tail calls, but they will be out of the office. Um, this will allow you, if you check this box and enter a phone number here, um, will allow you to assign yourself to the via cell phone um, or other phone. Um, and this will actually show up in your communicator as well. So the user can, can use the uh, primary phone dropdown where they're already assigned to a phone and assign themselves to their mobile device and then calls will go to that location. Um, under that, you will see there's an activation dropdown and there's two options, accept calls by pressing one and accept call by answering. Pressing one is the default in the system. Um, and so when you get that call on your, on your external device, you will get the, a short tail chime followed by um, the system asking you to press one to accept the call. If you change that to accept call by answering, then as soon as you pick up the cell phone, the call will be live and you will be on that call. Um, the reason for these options um, is for is specifically for voicemails. Um, if you have this set up to um, be accepted by pressing one, then a cell phone voicemail cannot grab the call, and then the call would end up in your short tail voicemail if you aren't able to grab the call. If you accept the call by answering, though, and the cell phone voicemail picks up, that call is now going to be an accepted call in your voicemail. And while you'd still get the voicemail, it's probably not going to be in the mailbox that you'd expect. So that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind um, when you when you uh, set this up for a user. Additional phones allows you to set up a um, another phone or even two additional phones to ring when the user gets called. Um, so you can actually set a ring delay here. Um, the default is none, so it just immediately tries to reach those other devices at the same time. You can also set it so after a certain number of rings, um, that's when the additional phones would kick in. So if you have ha have a cell phone or another phone that you'd want to ring, but you don't necessarily want it to ring all the time, um, then you can set a delay here so that it would only happen if you're not directly available to answer the call at your normal phone. Um, and it's very similar to external assignment here. Um, you do have the ability to enter an extension or external number. It's important to note with this that even though the system says extension, what it's looking for is actually an off system extension. Um, it is not looking for a normal short tail extension. And um, for those not familiar with off system extensions, those are extensions that um, may exist on another system, such as maybe another phone system that you have set up with a tie line um, to the short tail system um, or another, another device. Um, and we would set those up with extensions that go out of specific trunk. If you try to enter an extension for an existing short tail user, you will actually get an error um, saying that the, the uh, extension box cannot be used for that. Under that, you will have a number of rings for each device similar to Find Me. Um, and then you also have the activation options, the same as external assignment. You can accept by answering or you can accept by pressing one and the same voicemail situation applies there. One other thing to note with, with this, and this, this is with the find me, or yeah, it is with find me, it is with external assignment and it is with additional phones, is the number of rings is important. Um, for example, if you try to send this call out to a cell phone, um, it will take about two rings before that cell phone is actually reached by the system because the call has to bounce back out, hit the cell tower, and then find the cell phone. Um, so if you have this set to three rings, your user is only going to have about a ring on their cell phone to answer the call before it goes to the short tail voicemail. You want to? I would highly recommend setting this to at least five or six. Under that is personalized call handling rules. Um, just for your information, you can't actually create personalized call handling rules in Director. Um, what these are are um, basically advanced call handling rules um, based on caller ID or or specific just specific numbers coming in, um, where you can you can tell the system um, if this number calls me, I need it to go right to voicemail or I need to forward to another location. Um, that has to be set up by the user in their communicator client. Um, and they do have to have a professional or greater license um, in order to use that feature. If they do have anything set up though, if you go to this personal personalized call handling rules in director, you will be able to see anything that they've set up and you'll be able to enable, disable, or even delete them from here. So 
um, you can do that if you need to. But you, the only thing you cannot do from here is actually create a new one for the user. And then under this, you have your call handling mode options. Um, the system will show you the current call handling mode, um, which should normally be standard. Um, it could be any of the five call handling modes that are available in the Shortel system though, which are standard, in a meeting, out of office, extended absence, and custom. Um, under that, you also have a checkbox called Outlook Automated Call Handling. Um, this will actually sync up with the Outlook calendar if you use Outlook, and anywhere where your calendar says you're in a meeting or you're out of office, um, for example, um, the system will then put your phone into that state, which can be nice if you have a lot of meetings throughout the day um, and you just don't need the phone to be di disturbing you during those meetings. Um, however, um, this will be affected by anything on the Outlook calendar, so that's something to keep in mind. If you have users that have a lot of events on their calendar, they're always set to busy and it puts them into call handling modes that they don't wanna be in, you can uncheck this box and that will no longer happen. And they can also do that in their communicated client. And then under there, you can edit the call handling modes of the user. So if I click into standard here, you'll be able to see their call forwarding conditions, where those calls go if they're not available, how many rings they're able to get, um, their personal assistant, which is an option off their voicemail, and then there are a few check boxes as well here. Um, so the call forward condition, um, you have the choice between always, no answer, or busy, or never. Um, always is gonna always forward the call. Um, so as soon as a call comes in, it's gonna immediately get forwarded to the always destination that you see under it. No answer or busy means that the phone will ring like normal for the number of rings specified in the no answer number of rings. And if the, the, uh, the caller is busy, so if their call stack is full, um, it will go to the busy destination, and if they aren't able to answer, then it will go to the no answer destination. And then never will just continue to ring the phone um, until it is answered. That is typically set up for um, devices like fax machines, which won't have voicemail um, and have to just be able to answer the call. Um, it's also the default, the default setting if a user doesn't have a voicemail box is to be set to never. Um, the always busy and no answer destinations can all be changed um, and they can be changed to extensions or they can be changed to external numbers. Um, so um, you can set it up to forward to an external number if you need to. Um, and then the no answer number of rings can be set here as well. Um, the default in the system is three. Um, like I was saying before, I recommend at least five. Um, three is a little short. Um, for even users at their desk to be able to answer the call if they're in the middle of something. So I recommend setting this a little higher than three. Um, this is where you would be able to do that. And then personal assistant is a feature that you can you can set up so that when when you reach a user's voicemail, you can actually press zero in their voicemail and it'll send you to the personal assistant destination. Um, this is typically set up so that um, the uh, option will go to a receptionist if it's available, um, so that when you reach somebody that you need to talk to and you can't get to them, you can reach the operator and see if you can get a hold of them a different way. Um, this isn't actually enabled by default, but for each each user that needs this, you can change that setting here. Um, under that are a series of four check boxes. Um, enable Find Me. Um, if this box is checked and Find Me is set up in the external assignment and additional phones link that I showed earlier, then the Find Me um, ability will be able to be used. Message notification um, is for what's called escalation profiles, um, and that is another feature that we would go over in another training. It's kind of an advanced feature for um, for voicemail profiles. Essentially, you can ramp it up so that the system will call users again and try and try and inform them that they have a voicemail. Um, that box is what enables that. Um, enable calling additional phones lets you use your additional phones if you if you do have those set up in the external assignment link. And then enable voicemail greeting only mode. Um, this is another big one that we see come up quite often because users do have the ability to toggle this in communicator as well. Um, what this will essentially do is this will allow anybody calling this user to hear their voicemail greeting, but at the end, instead of being able to leave a voicemail, the system will say no voicemails will be able to be left for this mailbox and it will hang up. 
Um, so if you get a user saying that they um, are not able to receive voicemails, um, then I would check this box because this is most likely what is going on. Under that is the escalation profile I was talking about before. I'll show you it briefly um, so that you can you can see what it looks like. We will get into this in another training. The link isn't working. I'll get to it another way here in a second. Um, but what the escalation profile does is it will um, allow you to set up um, specifics for if a voicemail is received so that it, the system could call you back or call a group of users um, and leave you notifications that you have a voicemail waiting for you. You can also set a schedule for a user in here if you would if you would um, like to. Um, this is not typically used because the schedules are typically used for groups and auto attendance. But if you wanted to set a user up so that their phone is only in standard mode from 8 to 5 and it goes to out of office um, once 5 p.m. is hit, you can do that here. And then also you have a call handling note. Um, so if you wanted to put in a call handling note that people would be able to read in communicator if they hover over the user, you can enter a note here. This is pure, purely informational um, and is totally optional. Um, and all of these settings can be changed in each one of the call handling modes. Um, by default, every call handling mode other than standard goes directly to voicemail. Um, so if you want to make changes to those, you would just go into the personal options. You would choose the one that you wanted to change. So if I wanted to change extended absence, for example, um, and then I would make the changes in the settings here and save them. And that would save it for that particular call handling mode when the user puts themselves in. Let's see if this one will work. There we go. And this is the escalation profile box that I wanted to show you. Um, you can actually set up options like delivering um, email notifications for voicemails, um, and you can even send a WAV file for the voicemail if you wish. You can automatically forward messages, um, which, is, which was um, one of the questions that we had before. Um, in this area, if you wanted to forward voicemails to another user, you would just select the mailbox that, that you wanted it to go to. So that would be just this radio button, and then the extension that you wanted those, those voicemails forwarded to. Um, that's the easiest way to forward um, voicemails automatically. Um, if you wanted to forward calls, um, going back here real quick, I just remembered I did not cover that. Oh. There we go. Um, if you want to forward calls, the easiest way is to use one of the call handling modes that um, already automatically forward. And then you can set the always destination to the person or the group you want to forward those calls to. Um, one thing that is important to note is the system is smart enough to remember who was initially called. So if you forward a call to a user like this and the person that you're forwarding to doesn't answer, when the call gets sent to voicemail, it's actually going to get sent to the voicemail of the original user. So if, if you need to um, have a user's voicemails active as well as their calls. Um, you can use the automatic message forwarding in the escalation profile, um, or um, you could just get get the uh, voicemail password of the user to the user that's covering, um, which may be easier depending on the situation. And that covers the personal options here. Um, Heidi, did we have any other questions? Well, we do have quite a few questions, just a few I want to touch on so we can keep you going. Sure. I don't know how many times you've been asked about ringtones. So um, somebody is asking uh, a little bit more information on how to use a custom ringtone or how to uh, install a custom ringtone. Can you uh, give us an overview on that? Sure, and um, that actually leads me into the next the next group of settings as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll I'll move the screen over there so I can I can follow along um, and show you guys here. Um, but that's actually going to be handled at a user group level. Um, and so what you can do, there it is, um, is right in here. Um, there are different options that you can choose from. You can you'll see in our system we have qu quite a few different wave files. 
Um, and there is there is a step-by-step -step instruction guide for actually importing these files. But essentially what you can do is you can set up a 16-bit WAV file um, and put it into the FTP root of the server. Um, and then this will be, it will allow you to select those ringtones. So it is, it is a separate a separate feature and something that I won't be able to explain in depth in this training, but it is something that we would be able to send out. So if you could shoot us your email, um, we can get you those those instructions on how to do that. Thank you. Um, the next question um, I'm hoping you can touch on, um, can you go back to personal assistance? Sure. So the question is, if personal assistant is blank, is there a global setting that will be used instead? Um, so there is a global setting. Let's see if I can jog my memory on it here and give me a second here. I want to say that it was in here. I would be wrong. Um, I I thought that the what the default auto attendant menu was was that. Um, so I would have to I would actually have to double check that. Um, there is a site operator um, that is used in the system, but my understanding of it is that is totally internal um, and it would not be presented to external callers in voicemail if you hit zero. Um, so I would have to I would have to double check, um, but I believe the answer is no because it would be in it would be in the sites tab or it would be in this application servers tab because that's what would govern that. And since that isn't here, um, I would assume that it would only be a per user thing. Um, now, moving forward, if you wanted everybody to have the same option and to make it a little bit easier, there is a way to set defaults for that. Um, if you if you uh, look under the users tab, there's also a spot that says call handling mode defaults. And if you if you change these, you can actually set the personal assistant in the default values, and then any user you create moving forward would have that personal assistant. Great, thank you. So, um, were you going to now go into user groups a little bit more? That was the plan. Yes. Um, so this is okay. the other. This is the other big portion here um, that that we will see. Um, user groups is the set of permissions that governs um, each one of um, your users. Um, they can be put into different user groups so that they have different sets of permissions. So you can give executives access to more features than certain users. Um, anywhere from the ability to pick up other people's calls to seeing what's available in Communicator. Um, when you click on the user groups tab, um, you will see a number of a number of columns just like in the users tab um, with all of the user groups you have built and then the telephony features, the call permissions, and the voicemail permissions that are built, which are all their own separate uh, classes of service um, that the user group is built upon. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the executives user group here. Um, and to go over the options here, up at the top, you do have the name of the group. And then right under that, these are the, these are the big three when it comes to your settings. Um, your COS telephony, or your class of service for telephony, your class of service for call permissions, and your class of service for voicemail. Those three classes of service are what define the permissions that the user has. Um, you can very quickly go to the class of service that the group is using by clicking on these go to class of service links. Um, and you can also change them um, in the drop down here. So that's how you change your different user groups so that they are different from each other. Below that um, are two different settings for um, caller emergency service identification. What that is, if you are unaware, is what gets sent to 911 when 911 is dialed. Um, so this can be fairly important depending on how you are set up for 911. Um, if you're sending it out through an analog line, they're going to get that, that, that number and whatever address the carrier has on file for that number. Um, if you're using dial tone like SIP or a PRI, then the caller ID field can be used um, for the for the number um, if that's what your carrier has on file, or you can send the DID, um, which is something that I see a lot with school districts um, that have a feature called PSLE set up um, with their carrier, where each individual DID is mapped to the same address but to a particular room, and that way when 911 gets called, they know exactly where to respond um, for big buildings. Under that is account code collection. 
um, in the system, you can set up account codes that would be needed in order to um, dial a certain a certain style of number, whether it be long distance or international, um, for example. Um, it is by default set to disabled. Um, if you want the user to have the ability to do it, you can set it to optional. And so they can specify an account code, which can then be reported against for billing purposes, for example. Or if you want to force the use of the account code, you can set this to forced. And then anytime the user tries to do a, a particular call um, that is above the scope that they are allowed, they would have to enter an account code or they would not be able to place the call. Um, going hand in hand with that, there's a checkbox that allows anybody that's using Communicator to see a list of account codes when they dial. Um, that um, will make their lives a lot easier rather than having to remember a code every time. If you're doing it on the phone, obviously you will need to know the code um, in order to make that work. Below that is outgoing trunk groups. This is actually the access to trunk groups that the users will have. Um, so if you have multiple trunks in the system, but only want a user to be able to dial out of one or two of them, um, in the user group, you can select which, which groups um, of trunks they have access to by checking the boxes. So in this particular case, only our SIP trunk group is enabled for executives. They'd still be able to accept any calls inbound from the other trunks, but these are the trunks that they would be able to use outbound. And then going down here, um, just to touch on these really briefly, um, voicemail interface mode is almost never going to be touched, um, but if you had an external voicemail, maybe an old phone system that was still handling voicemail, um, or you had a tie line to, to a system that, was, that you wanted to have handle your voicemail, you could change that here. Um, t the default of none is what you're going to want in 99% of cases. And if you want to make a change to that, I would recommend giving us a call um, to make sure that everything is set correctly. You can actually change the music on hold for a specific user group. Um, so all your user groups can be different. And then you also have the ability to change the user profile toolbars here. This is, these are um, a series of global toolbars that you can, you can then assign to a specific user group. So in this particular case, um, these users are built for our contact center demo as well. And those three toolbars in place are all for buttons that are used for the contact center software. Phone application, um, I've actually never seen this used, but this is for custom applications that are, that are built into the system. Um, if you had any of those system, system applications um, available, you would be able to choose those in the dropdown. And it's the same with the web plugins here. Um, I've never actually seen those in use, so I'm not sure if those are still in use by Shortel or not, or if it's left over from an older version of Director. Um, but just to be aware, just so you are aware, those settings are there. And then under that is where you can you can uh, pick and choose any any custom ringtones and wallpaper. Um, and as I stated before, we can get you those those uh, instructions to get those set up um, after this is over, um, to, just to make sure that we have time to get through what we need to get through today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the classes of service real quick um, for each one of these so you know what you're looking at with the permissions. I'm going to start with the telephony class of service. And I'm going to do it by clicking on this go to class of service link. Um, this telephony class of service is chock full of checkboxes that essentially govern the, the abilities that a user group has. Um, so starting at the top here, um, you do have a name for the class of service. If you do want to create a new one, you can create a new one at the top um, using the buttons or even copy it to create a new copy. Um, you can set a maximum call stack depth for your users. Um, so if you remember, we, we talked about that on the individual user page um, where it can be set between one and eight. Well, you can actually lower this um, um, to whatever number you want. And then that would be the max number of calls that anybody in the user group would be, would be able to get. Um, it does default to eight. Below that is the maximum buddies per user. And that is how many buddies the user can have in, in their uh, contacts tab in Communicator. It defaults to 40. Um, we recommend setting that higher to, um, I think we set it to normally to 500, just to make sure that users have ample room for buddies. 
under that is the maximum maximum personal contacts. And what this is used for is for um, contact upload synchronization with your Outlook system. Um, so the system by default will allow up to 500 personal contacts to be uploaded. Um, we recommend sending that to 5,000 just to make sure that you are not going to run out. The next one is your maximum parties in your Make Me conference. Um, this can be set anywhere between three and six, and three is the default. Um, this is how many people can be on one call at a time um, using the conference feature on the phone before you would need something like a conference bridge to get everybody in. Um, one thing to note is if you need more than three, um, if you want to do anywhere between four and six, one of your short gear switches in your environment would need to be set up to um, have additional conference ports on it, which does limit the amount of IP phones they can use. Um, if you have any specific questions about that, or if you are not sure um, if you if you have the ability to do um, more than three party conferencing, um, we can take a look with you and see if you have the switch resources that are required in order to make this happen. IAM presence invitation handling um, is how this how the user will accept IAM requests. By default, it is going to be set to automatically accept. Um, you can also set it to prompt to accept the invitation, or you can set it to user defined, which is um, an option that they have in their communicator client um, to choose between prompting and auto accepting. If you're set to auto accept, the IAM just pops up. If you prompt to accept it, you will get a pop up asking if you want to accept the chat from the user at this time. All right, going down the list here now, we have several different checkboxes that all um, describe different features in the system that users can have access to. I'm gonna hit on these really briefly here. Um, call pickup allows you to pick up um, calls from other users using the pickup button on the phone or by using communicator to right click and pick up the user. Allowing trunk to trunk transfer will allow you to accept a call in one trunk and transfer it out another trunk to an external number. Overhead and group paging allows the users in the user group to um, use any paging extension built up, um, whether it is a paging group with IP phones in it or the paging port on the front of the short gear switch. If this is turned off, they will actually be told that the action is not acceptable when they try to page. Allow make hunt group busy allows the users to type in a special code to busy out a hunt group. This is typically used if you have a group of users that um, don't have really a specific set of hours, but they need to be able to turn their calls on and off um, as needed. Um, this checkbox will allow them to do that. Um, if that's something that you would like to get set up, um, we can help you with that as well. There are There's a special code that you will need to use in order for this to happen that has to happen on the phone and cannot be done through communicator. Extension reassignment allows people to hot desk. Um, so it would allow me to log myself into another phone at another location um, and allow me to take calls there. PSTN failover allows me to use that feature that we showed on the individual user tab um, so that I can be reached another way if you cannot reach me via extension. Caller ID name and number for other extensions allows you to see who somebody is talking to if you hover over them in communicator. Um, it will show them show them not only as on the phone, but it will show the caller ID of the person they're talking to, whether it's an internal extension or an outside number. If you don't want that to be shown, you can uncheck this box. Enumerate individual held calls for on park lets you actually choose between all the parked calls um, on the phone. When you on park a call, it'll actually pull up a little, a little dialog menu to allow you to select between the calls. Um, on checking this, we'll just on park the first call um, it, when you on park a call. Allow customization of IP phone buttons and communicator monitor windows allows you to um, set your own speed dials on your own phone as well as move around your windows in communicator, which are modular by default. Um, if you don't want your users to be able to do that, you can uncheck this box. Show extensions with different prefixes and directory. Um, if you have an extension starting with one and you have a bunch of users in your system starting with two, um, if you uncheck this box, you wouldn't be able to see those users starting with two in the system directory, either on the phone or in communicator. Um, checking this box allows you to do that. So if you have sites that aren't supposed to talk to each other or don't need to talk to each other, you can uncheck this box. 
allow collaboration features um, allows you to set users so that they can use the conference bridge and IM appliances. Recording of own calls is pretty self-explanatory. It allows the users to manually record um, using communicator or their phone. Um, if you uncheck this, then they won't be able to use that feature. Intersite video calls lets you lets you uh, set up the one-to-one -one video calls and communicator across links to other sites. If you don't want to use that for bandwidth reasons, you can uncheck that. Allowing call notes lets you lets you set a call note in the call properties of of the call in communicator. Um, you can you can type in notes for specific calls. You can uncheck this if you don't need that or don't want that to occur. Um, and the same for showing call history and call details. Um, that will essentially disable the history tab if if you uncheck that box. And then finally, allowing the upload of personal contacts to server. That's for the that's for the uh, Outlook integration um, and the synchronization of contacts. If you don't want to allow that, you can uncheck this box and it will disallow that upload. Under that um, are a few more advanced features that are a little bit more commonly used, and this is more for training purposes and administrative purposes. You've got directed intercom and group paging, whisper paging, barge in, recording others' calls, and then silent monitor and silent coach. Um, there are two different two different facets to these in setting these up. Um, the first is that an allow initiation checkbox, which you see here. Um, if you have this unchecked, then the user group will not be able to use that feature. Um, if you have this checked, then people in the user group will be able to actually start using that feature. Um, they'll be able to at least initiate to the user that they want to use the feature on. Um, what goes hand in hand in that is the accept radio buttons. Um, if the accept button is set to none, then even if a user that's allowed to initiate um, a whisper page or direct intercom, for example, tries to use it on a, a user that is set to none in their user group, it will be rejected. If it's set to all, then anyone that has the ability to initiate these actions will be able to use them. And if you set up only from, you can specify an extension that um, that one user group can um, accept the command from. So if you have a supervisor for a specific group, for example, you might want to use the only from box. And then you would be able to um, allow them and only them to um, manipulate the user group in question. Allow call handling changes. Um, this lets you let the user change between the standard call handling mode and the other call handling modes. Um, current mode is what lets them toggle the setting. Um, and then detailed settings is um, what they can do to manipulate those, those exact settings, just like you can do in the personal options under each custom call handling mode. Um, the users do have the ability to do that in communicator. If you uncheck that detailed settings box, though, they would not be able to actually change those. Then under here is allow external call forwarding and find me destinations. Um, without these three boxes on, you wouldn't be able to turn on the external assignment um, and you wouldn't be able to um, do additional ringing of additional phones when a user is called. Um, so if you want those settings to be available, these settings need to be turned on in the checkboxes here under the telephony classes service. And then finally, um, the scope is the type of calls that you can you can make in the Shortel system. For each user group, um, you can set it so that they could make only local calls, um, only specific kinds of long distance calls, up to international calls, or just all calls in general. And then under that as well, you can set up restrictions so that, um, for example, if you don't want them to call 900 numbers, you can set a restriction here so that those numbers wouldn't be able to be called, or maybe a specific prefix of numbers. Um, if you have like a specific prefix in your area that you shouldn't be calling, you can set that up here as well. Um, and there's also call permissions that you can set here. Um, and this is this is actually a pretty elaborate topic. So if this is something that people want to learn more about, we can we can set this up in another training as well. Well, thank you, Tom. That's a lot of great information. Um, I know we have 10 more minutes of your time. Um, I want to go to this question. Um, can an individual be in more than one group, or can groups be nested? So 
with the with the user groups, a user can only be a part of one user group. Um, so um, you would be limited by that. Um, if you have a user that needs a specific set of permissions as opposed to other users, what you can do is you could build a second a second user group and just put only that user in it. So that is one way to get around that so they can have a very custom set of permissions. Um, but um, as a general rule, a user can only be in one user group at a time. Thank you. Well, I know we um, had hoped to cover a lot more information. Do you think you have time to discuss high level um, the difference between hunt groups and work groups? I sure do. Um, so um, hunt groups and work groups are the two ways in the short tell system that you can set up groups of, groups of users that can accept the same calls, um, so teams that work together. Um, the high level difference between the two, um, work groups reside on the short tell server and use the, the uh, server resources for um, incoming calls, whereas hunt groups are actually on a short gear switch and they're handled by the switch environment. Um, so where that can come into play is if you have remote sites that um, would be easier to rely on the, on the switch on location rather than a server across your network, then you, you would wanna set up a hunt group um, just to make it easier for those remote users. Um, the other big difference between the two um, is that while a hunt group does not have its own voicemail box, a work group does. And so with a work group, you can actually um, also have a shared voicemail box that all the, all the members of the group can see at the same time. Um, what we will often do for remote sites is we'll use them in conjunction so that a hunt group forwards to a work group voicemail that everybody can see. That way the call isn't reliant on the server for set up, but you can still receive voicemails. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, now with about nine minutes to go, what would you like to talk about next? What do you think um, is most beneficial for those listening in today? So there's a couple things that I think we can we can hit in the next 10 minutes here. Um, I will go to schedules now, um, and I I apologize for running a little bit long on the users. There is definitely a lot of information there, so we will we can cover the hunt groups and the work groups in in depth on another training um, to go over those. But I think right now one of the first things that we should look at is scheduling because um, that's one of the things that I see commonly. Um, if you click on the schedules tab here. Um, you will have options for on-hours schedules, holiday schedules, and custom schedules. Um, if I click into on-hours here, oh, it's going to do that. Give me one second here. I just need to trick my system real quick. There we go. Um, you will see this slider here um, where you can adjust the schedules by, by uh, clicking and dragging. And then once you do, it'll fill it in blue here. You can also edit it by right clicking and changing the time. So you can see my, my click and drag went from 5.15 to 1.30. Um, I can also fill the entire week. So if I had the same schedule all week, I could fill it in, but I can also delete. So if I'm not open on Saturday and Sunday, for example, I can delete Saturday and Sunday. Um, it's that simple to create a schedule. Um, now, is the one thing that I do see is often when when a schedule is created, um, when it is then modified later on, instead of editing the uh, the schedule that's already in place, I often see people click and drag over the top of the existing schedule. Um, this isn't the way that you would want to handle that um, because this will actually create two overlapping schedules for the same day on the same schedule and it can lead to issues like your groups not being able to pick up calls because the system gets confused and thinks that it is in off hours when it shouldn't be. Um, so whenever you want to make a change to this group um, you want to instead of doing that click and drag again you just want to right click and edit this um, and you can change the times there and to show you if I change 1.30 to 3.30 here, you'll see that the slider changes automatically and adjusts to what I told it to do. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we covered that because that's one of the one of the uh, more common things that I see when I troubleshoot a system. 
And so I'm going to reset that and go back to the main page here. Um, holiday schedules is done by date. Um, and you can set specific schedules um, so that you have many to choose from if you have certain branches that don't follow the same schedule for holidays as others. So if I just set one up here, and then I can add a new holiday, and you can add the name of the holiday, and then the date of the holiday. Um, holidays are 24-hour schedules. So if you have a if you have a specific date, like say a, the Fourth of July, which is coming up, um, here we go. And I have to actually do it. There we go. Um, if you set a specific date like this. Um, then you then that specific date in this case july 4th in 2017 would follow your holiday schedule for for holidays like the fourth though that don't actually change the day if you remove the year then every single year on july 4th then it would follow the holiday schedule so it will save you a lot of time um, when you're setting up schedules so that you don't have to go in and change those on a very frequent basis And then the last piece is your custom scheduling. Um, custom schedules um, are similar to holidays. Um, you can set up specific custom schedules. And then if you add a range, in this particular case, you'll, you'll still have a name and date. Um, but you can set a start time and end time. Um, so these are not 24-hour schedules. This would just be able to be whatever you need. So if you have like a, an emergency meeting, you could set a custom schedule. Um, from one to two, and it would go to the cut. It would go to wherever the custom schedule is supposed to go in your in your groups or wherever you have the custom schedule applied. Um, from one one p.m. to two p.m. or whatever time that you choose for this particular piece. Um, let's see here. We've got five minutes left. I don't know if I would have enough time right now, Heidi, to go through auto attendance as well. Um, do we have any more questions that I'd be able to answer? Um, let's see. There um, has been a couple of questions. Um, somebody's indicating, you know, when it, um, there's so many different options within Director. Uh, there seems to be a ton of conditional settings such as in order for a user to call forward, you need to have two other checkboxes check elsewhere in the system. Is there a flow chart or easy guide available? To my knowledge, there isn't really an easy flow chart for those kind of settings. Um, they are all covered in the Shortel admin guide um, that you can actually grab from director as well down at the bottom under documentation. But to my knowledge, there isn't an easy to use flowchart. Um, if, if that is something that um, would benefit uh, people moving forward, it might be something that Inflow may be able to put together. Um, but as far as a, an official short held document with a flowchart or easy diagram, I do not believe so, no. All right. Well, indeed, Director is um, very in depth. There are so many different settings. Um, that's why, you know, we're always here to help you guys, um, and we want to share the knowledge where we can. Um, so, Tom and I will be uh, working on getting targeted answers to the questions that have come through the chat window, so we appreciate your time. Um, I'd also be very interested in knowing um, additional targeted topics that you guys would like covered in future admin trainings. Um, it's just impossible to cover everything with even a two hour block of time. So um, we definitely appreciate your time. Um, I hope you have a really great rest of your day and know that we have recorded today's session and um, I will be uh, working to get that added as a link on our knowledge base on our website. Um, and if you haven't spent any time out there on the Info Communications website, at the top right-hand corner of every page is the knowledge base. We have a dedicated team of individuals always 
updating the resources out there. So there's some great information out there on many different topics of SureTel um, from the user perspective as well as the administrator perspective. So again, thank you very much for your time today and watch for additional information from myself answering your questions. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.